Welcome back to today's final Splash of Paint, where it's time for us to shine our creative spotlight on another professional artist who is causing a creative stir. Today is the turn of sailor, surfer and versatile professional artist Paul Ackerman. So settle back as we take a closer look at his work and watch him in action. Hi there. Today I'm going to show you some techniques to help you control acrylics lovely smooth smooth blends of acrylics that people have lots of trouble with because they dry so quickly you'll notice i'm working on a canvas these techniques work well on a canvas but they also work really well on watercolor paper but not not acrylic paper it tends to fall apart so what i'm going to do first is wet the paper what this does is it buys us time time to get the blends right then I'm going to put white on. What the white does is it makes the paint more opaque. And when it's more opaque, we can get a much, much smoother blend. There we go, that's going beautifully. You can see how careful I'm being, can't you? A little bit of colour. Dabbed on. That was cerulean blue. Then we'll go for ultramarine, higher in the sky, a darker, deeper blue. And again, this lovely, I'm being ironic here, careful <laughs> blending. When we've got it nearly how we want, we can cross hatch. And we just want to control the tone and enjoy slapping the paint on there. Maybe a bit deeper up there. When we've got it nearly as we want, I'm holding back lovely, lovely, dry, dry brush. And that gives us our final blend. All across the sky. If you keep going on this, you'll get it really, really smooth, but that's fine for me today. I'm gonna put some clouds on now, really simply. Just dab away with a flat brush, a flat nylon brush, ideal for moving the acrylics around. And we'll get some sky on there. And I think we'll just leave it at that for that. Now we're going to move down. To the bottom and once again, going to go through the same process. It's water on to give us time. If it gets too wet, a bit of kitchen roll, take it off again, it's not a problem. White to make it opaque. It makes such a difference to the blending with this smooth, smooth blend we can get if we get the white in there. Otherwise your acrylics tend to go really, really streaky. So we'll wallop it on, spread it across, same as before. And then this time we're going to get a mixture of the two blues and we're going to work across and as the brush runs out, fade it upwards, work upwards. So we've got a nice smooth blend again and we'll give it a smooth blend across with my nearly dry brush. Back to the blues. Wherever there's blue at the top, or more of it, we'll put more blue there, we'll pull it up. So instead of having it just smooth, we're balancing here. We're balancing the dark blues at the top with the blues at the bottom. And we'll bring some white for the clouds in reflection, we'll bring those downwards. There we go. There's always a balance to learn about how much water, how much paint. There's no formula for this, so it's something we do have to learn with a little bit of experience rather than following the instructions. It's not the same as a recipe. Now I'm going to pull up very gently and lift the brush. Down very gently and lift the brush. I've got masking tape across the middle here. 
that's to protect my horizon. Now again, some blue. And on here now we're going to put some nice streaks, horizontal, to break up the wet sand as it's going to be. And down at the bottom here I've just got some raw sienna, lots of white in it to make it nice and opaque so that we can slide this across for the beach, like so. And that gives us some dry sand to work against the wet sand. Right, now masking tape comes off leaves us the horizon and so now we're going to mix up we're going to get cerulean blue like so as a nice turquoisey blue and we're going to pull in tiny bits of burnt umber what this does is gives you a really nice sea color a little bit of white in there again to make it opaque and loading the brush by pulling it through the paint keeps it trimmed into a nice flat edge and then what we can do is cut this across for our horizon at this point i'm concentrating entirely on the top edge it doesn't matter what's happening underneath because now i can fill that in Mix up some more paint. Again, nice sea colour. And we can get that coming down. Worked across. Nice vigorous brush strokes. Oops, I've missed my horizon there. It doesn't matter because we'll put an island there. Work across. dark blue streak on top of that a little bit of white on a knife it has to be titanium white for all of these techniques because that's opaque the soft mixing white won't work so we'll put that on top of that dark streak for some waves and then we'll mix some brown burnt umber and some ultramarine to get some nice dark grey, browny, bluey colours and we'll apply that with the knife coming down, touch it to the horizon and lift. Once more around to there, touch it to the horizon and lift. We're concentrating purely on the bottom edge at first and then we'll come back and we'll make the top edge work. And there we have it, our finished picture. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Great project, Paul. Love how the colour, light and movement combine to produce a strong, bright painting full of life and reflect your obvious passion for the sea. Right, before we wrap up today's programme, folks, we've just got time to dip into the Splashy Paint post bag to answer another of your artistic questions. Ellen Chapman has emailed in to ask, I'm new to painting and could really use some help with my technique. Where can I find an art group or tutor in my area? Getting advice and some help with your painting is always a great idea. Whether you're a beginner or have been painting for years, there's always something new to learn. The SAA website has a directory of art groups and art teachers which you can browse to find your local group. I'm sure you'll find the answer you're looking for there. Art groups are also a great way of sharing ideas and getting to know more people in your area. So good luck with that and have fun. And of course, if you are not internet savvy, you can always call the SAA and their customer service staff will be only too happy to point you in the right direction. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, folks. But join us next week for our final episode when popular artist Marilyn Alice reveals a simple technique for tidying up your finished works of art. 
Experimental artist Alison Board demonstrates how mixed media can add some colourful character to a nosy cow. And what colour wonder Jeff Kersey shows how to paint light over dark using colour and tone. Pip McGarry goes wild with oils to wash, brush and comb some tiger's fur. And finally we go back to the very beginning and let Vic Beercroft have the last word on pastels. So tune in next week for one final drop of a splash of paint. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.